Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. So I just want to make this video for those of you who are interested in what a school social worker does. I made a short and to my surprise it blew up. A lot of you were really impressed by what I do. I was really shocked because I'm like, oh, I didn't really realize I had an audience for that. Um, and so, but then someone specifically requested that I made a video where I explained what I do as a social worker in a school setting. And so of course there are limitations to that. Like you will probably never see me recording videos of kids or recording a therapy session because obviously confidentiality hit but you know all the things so I can't do that but I will do my best to explain what I do just sitting down here now um, so as a school work social worker there's so much you can do and I'm just gonna um, put it in to three tiers to best explain so on the tier one level I do social emotional learning lessons SEL for short and I do this alongside our school counselor and I do this once a week we go into all the classes in the entire school and we deliver social emotional learning lessons now we cover topics like bullying we cover topics like uh, personal safety feelings emotions coping skills just things at a general kind of foundational level more so like psychoeducation so that the kids know what these things are about we make our appearances in the classroom they know us we know them and they know who they can reach out to should they need help from any of these categories um, at the tier two level this is you know kind of honing in more on a specific topic so it may not be for the entire school but it's more so for like a group of people and so this is more so counseling groups restorative circles um things that i do at that level <laughs> sorry i'm trying not to get distracted i'm i work in a school and obviously there's people um but yeah so um tier two level working with people in a group setting so i may do lunch bunches for kids who you know they're struggling with transitioning their parents are separating or divorcing and they just need a space to process those emotions kids who have experienced grief and loss i don't think i mentioned but i work at an elementary school so <laughs> the audience i'm talking about is uh kids from pre-k to fifth grade okay um and so that is what i do at the tier two level counseling groups and all of that and it's just more so early intervention prevention so that uh, the kids have a space where they can process these emotions before it gets to something a little bit more specific, which is tier three. And at the tier three level, uh, you see that I'm doing a little bit more direct practice. And so this is where I will now have kids that I have on my caseload that I see on a daily basis, right? For different things that they may be presenting or struggling with right and so at the th tier three level before i meet with those children i will have to get a referral from either the teacher myself i could i could observe a child and see that they need services and i could refer them to my agency um one of the staff members or even their parent right and so when i get that referral i will then call their parent and or guardian and talk to them, let them know some of the things I've observed or the staff here have observed. And then I will do what's called a biopsychosocial assessment. I know that that's a mouthful, but really what that is, is a series of questions that I ask the parent to better understand the child, where they're coming from, how long they've presented these symptoms, and then I will give a clinical impression slash a diagnostic impression, right? And so I would then, I wouldn't tell the parent what that diagnosis is just, you know, at that time, because of course my supervisor would have to look over it and stuff. So I'm not gonna just go and say, oh, your child has ADD or your child has um, anxiety or your child has this phobia. Like I will, I'll, I'll, I'll give a clinical impression. See, language is important. So I will say things like, okay, what I'm hearing is your child may be, may be presenting symptoms of X, Y, and Z, but I'm not gonna say your child has this, right? Because you wanna be careful, right? Um, and so I will do that assessment and then I'll give the diagnostic impression and then I will start to meet with the child. Um, now upon meeting with the child, of course, I'm going through things like from our first session, I'm talking about confidentiality. I'm talking about 
um, the three reasons why I would have to break confidentiality being number one, the child wants to hurt him or herself. Uh, that number two, the child wants to hurt someone else. Or number three, the, someone is hurting the child and they disclose that information to me. Those are the three limits of confidentiality. I would have to break it on that basis. But outside of that, I got you. What, we, what you say in here stays in here. I tell my kids that all the time. And so I cover things like that. I state the purpose of therapy, what we're going to do here. And then we work together to create what is called a person-centered treatment plan. Um, now, depending on the age of the kid, um, we can do this plan together, right? Like I said, I work with pre-K to fifth grade. So this you're looking at anywhere between five to 11 years old. So it depends on where they're at. Um, but if the kid is cognizant enough, then we would work together to create some goals that the child wants to achieve in therapy, right? But if they're too young and they probably don't really understand the concept of it, then I would involve, either way, the parent is aware, right? Um, and so we do the treatment plan. And then on that treatment plan, I would also include interventions that I will be utilizing to help the child with achieving those goals. And then I'll talk about the duration of our sessions and all of that. And so that is what I do. And then we just, you know, we start meeting. Of course, the teacher is aware that they, that child will be uh, seen for sessions. Oh, and then I have to add that you cannot see any child or any client for that matter without written consent. And so you have to have a signed consent form, not just verbal consent. <laughs> you need to have written consent that um, this, this parent and or guardian has agreed to services and you have to explain what is on the consent it really has to be informed and so i had a parent the other day who uh, said that she was interested in services for her child um, but she didn't speak english and so thankfully there was an interpreter present that could help me explain verbatim what was on the consent something um, that i do at the tier three level and then um outside of that i do situation i handle situations where crisis come up so a child may be having suicide ideation i am called for that a child may be being bullied and they need help with uh, navigating that mediating that conversation i'm called for that um conflict resolution i'm called for that so you know anything that's like a crisis if there's even homicidal ideation where a child is clearly stating a plan has access to a weapon of wanting to harm another person i handle that as well it looks different every day but on any given week you should find me doing something on any of those three tiers um in addition to that um sometimes when things are kind of moving pretty slow and i don't have much to do i will just check in on on the teachers i'm like hey i'm just offering in-class support like you know if there's any child who's who's presenting some behavioral challenges i'll just kind of peek my head in and see if there's any child who may just need a break and i'll bring them to my room um, to my office and then um i have a ton of sensory toys here just to give them an, a space to kind of just relax and to de-stress de themselves right and so that is another thing that i'll do and then outside of that i have a lot of documentation that i need to get done on any given day um there's a lot of t's you have to cross and a lot of i's you have to dot because if you didn't document it it never happened that's something you need to take away from this video documentation is everything you have got to document everything that you do um everything that a child says and i also find that it's important to have another staff member present when you're meeting with a child um not saying if it's like you're um on their on your caseload like if it's like confidential information but if like a child for example if it's like you're making a cps oh I'm, i didn't even mention i also make um reports to cps if a child is being abused in any way sexually physically or emotionally or being neglected so i do i'm called in for that as well i've had to sit in on some pretty sad cases where i i've witnessed um i've seen bruises and scars on children and it's so sad but i do have to also make that report because as a social worker as a, an adult that works with children you are a mandated reporter it's the law so make sure that you 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 know that if you're considering this field you have to report and they there's a certain time frame in which you have to report um so be careful that you are on top of that i do like i said documentation i do a ton of documentation um i also regardless of my license level i still my company requires that you still 
have to be supervised. You still have to join group supervision. So not just group, but even individual supervision as well. So I'm still um, one that meets regularly with my supervisor just for more so clinical support. We do case presentations just to learn from the other disciplines as well. Um, I also spearhead a mental health team here at our school alongside our school psychologist and our school counselor just to have a space where we talk about the climate of our school and, and to talk about recommendations. Um, that's the opportunity to refer a child if they've noticed anyone that is in need of extra support. That's the, the space. Of, oh, and also our principal is a part of that as well. I covered everything that I do. <laughs> I think I covered everything that I do. Um, but it's just important to know that being a school social worker, it looks different for everyone. I'm sharing information based off of my experience, obviously. Um, I'll be, I'm just so glad to say that my experience for the past almost three years has been pretty amazing. I, I've never been overwhelmed or swamped with work. Um, the climate at my school, at my job is pretty welcoming. It's pretty safe. It's really nice. And so I love what I do. I don't know how longer, how much longer I will be um, a school social worker because you know I just don't know what the future holds. But in this season of my life, it it's great. I don't have any complaints. I'm very much blessed. Um, so if you are considering um, a job as a school social worker, I highly recommend it. Based off my based off of my experience, especially as a recent graduate, it's gonna help you get your feet wet. I mentioned you're gonna you're gonna be exposed to just about everything in the social work field, child welfare, child abuse, neglect, social emotional lessons, uh, working with kids, diagnosing kids with you know all sorts of disorders and things like that, working with other disciplines within the school setting. I mean, you're getting exposed to a lot of stuff. So I think that this is good to just start out, okay? Um, I know that this is primarily a faith-based channel and so I want to keep it that way. I thought about it and I'm like, yeah, I just want to I want to I want to have one niche for this this channel. Now, if you all are interested in more of what I do as a school social worker in this role, I need you to flood the comments and say I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested because if that's the case, I will more than likely, I don't want to promise, but I will more than likely uh, start another YouTube channel where I focus on my role as a social worker and, and film some what I do in the day videos and just behind the scenes stuff because I think that people care about it and there's an audience for that, which I'm like, oh, okay, I never knew you guys were interested. So if you are interested and you want more of this content, flood the comments, say, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. And um, and let me know so that I can go ahead and, and open up that channel. And then I'll make sure to let you all know. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in being a social worker, go for it, okay? It's great. Talk to you later.